Hello and welcome back to your show, Election Watch. This is the second segment of your show where we are talking all things politics with uh, none other than the UANC leader, Reverend Gwinyai Muzorewa. Welcome back, sir. Yeah, welcome. We have been discussing with you your prospects for the 2023 elections. Mm -hmm. And you are indeed confident that you will prevail. Others will claim that the front runner is the incumbent, E.D. Mnangagwa, who is leader of ZANU-PF, mm. and the, probably the largest opposition political party, Triple C, led by advocate Nelson Chamisa. What are your sentiments to those who suggest such a thing? Uh, they will be surprised to find that uh, this thing, God is in this whole thing. And so people are not going to go just by crowds. They're going to go by the quality of leadership that I bring to them. So if they see that at the election, on the election day, that uh, Muzorewa is the highest number, they should not be surprised because this is not about crowds. It's about quality leadership. It's about wisdom. It's about, about uh, integrity. And so people have a choice, have a chance on the 23rd of August to really decide they may find out that uh, they've been following large crowds, and in the large crowd, there's nothing but dust. Then they find out that in the small crowd, there's a quality, there's content, there's good leadership, there's prosperity, and so they'll make up their minds. That's why people have to vote one by one. They don't vote in groups. They vote individually. So you don't make or read anything of the mobilization strategy being posed by these political parties who are amassing a number of people, hundreds of thousands, who are coming to the rallies? Well, I do not want to say that a lot of people are driven to these uh, rallies. I don't want to say that. We don't drive people to any rallies. What we do is we hand out information to people by way of uh, flyers and let them know what we are about. So what we are about is in writing. It's not, it's not a, a shouting contest. It is a, a content contest. And so we're going to show people who we are, by what we say. And they know that the UNC is known for delivering what they promise and promising what they can deliver. A content contest is not one that you are looking at. Um, Reverend, what does your manifesto speak to? Why should people elect you? Thank you very much. Um, we have, uh, we have uh, eight pillars. Okay. Uh, that constitute our, our, our manifesto. But I'm going to mention only two or three okay, for the okay. sake of time and so on. Right. The first one is about, about agriculture. This country is well known for producing uh, grain, for producing uh, tobacco and so forth. But of late, the production has been not as good as it could be. Uh, because our farmers, uh, a lot of, uh, they don't have the equipment that they need. What we are going to do is to equip the farmers uh, in every way so that they can be the farmer that they should be. They can be rich, really, and really enjoy being a farmer. So uh, land is a very important item on our, on our, in our manifesto. Also, a lot of people have been told by others that, uh, that, uh, this land is going to be taken back to somebody who owned it before. We assure people that the, rent, the land reform arrangement is irreversible. The UANC participated in the liberation war fighting for the land. We got this land, people have this land, and it's permanent. If you get a farm from the government, that is yours forever, and for your children and your children's children. So we want the farmers to know that uh, our position on land is clear. Our difference from the current government is that uh, we remove this 99-year lease. Okay. If you live in your country, you don't want to live on leased land all your life. That's not good. So we remove that 99-year lease and say, once you have a farm, it's yours forever. Yeah, plant your vegetables, plant your gum trees, plant your fruit trees, because it's for you and your children and your children's children. That's what we fought for, this land, not to be a tenant on our, in our own land. Interesting that you, land is also a central entity in your manifesto. I think a lot of political parties share those sentiments with you, save for a few. But uh, we recently engaged the Minister of Agriculture. We are made to understand that uh, for three years in a row, 2021, 2022, 2023, 
the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, the farmers have been smashing records. Wheat, we reached the surplus to the extent that they are saying that this, at the fall of this season, they are going to be exporting to neighboring countries. The current ministry has won awards for that. What mm. are your sentiments? I, I, hey, if, the, if people are producing what they're supposed to produce, all power to them. That's what we look for. But the last time I checked, mm -hmm. I discovered, I was shocked actually to discover that uh, uh, some of our bakers still get wheat from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. I said, oh, Zimbabwe, of mm -hmm. all the countries in the world, we should, we should be exporting. That is true. We should be exporting. Evidence that we are, we are growing enough wheat for ourselves is that the price of bread must also go down. Mm -hmm. Now, they justify the price of, of bread because they say we have to import this and that and that. There should be a time when, when bread should be the cheapest commodity in the, in, in the country because we, we grow the wheat. There's, there should be a time when, uh, when, um, when uh, mealy meal should be very, very affordable, mm -hmm. but it's very expensive. We grow this in this country. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Maybe what you are referring to is a result of some propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> propaganda, okay. <laughs> Reverend, there is this issue that uh, has been making the headlines. It's the issue of, uh, some have termed it the Patriotic Act, mm -hmm. but it is a criminal, criminal law amendment, which speaks to patriotism mm -hmm. and which criminalizes conduct of those who go begging for sanctions mm -hmm. on Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. who go and tarnish the image of the country mm -hmm. to the extent of affecting its sovereignty mm -hmm. in the international standing. Mm -hmm. What is your position as regards that act? Some say it's draconian, it's meant to entrench um, the incumbent party. What do you make of that act? This patriotic act uh, is, um, is, has been made for, for two reasons. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say that uh, if for every Zimbabwe, for any Zimbabwean, to go outside the country and, and they despise your country out there, say, speak evil about your country, that is irresponsible. We are supposed to, to speak well of our country. If we are not the best, uh, if we are not producing the best in the world, that's not, that's not a reason to, to, to despise your country. So um, I'm one of those who believe that uh, the, this uh, country is one of the best. At least it was one of the best, and we want to restore that. We want to restore its goodness so that Zimbabwe has a good name. Uh, for, for us to have over 4 million people emigrating, leaving this country to go to other countries, it's a shame. People should be coming to Zimbabwe because we have a beautiful climate. On that positive note, I'm afraid <laughs> I must cut you short because of the time. Okay. There you have it, viewers. Reverend Gunyai Muzarewa, the leader of the UANC, saying that the Patriotic Act is all right as long as people are Zimbabweans, they should love their country and they should not be going out to have their country despised and made to stand out as a sore thumb out there international in the international community. This, is, this now takes us to the second break on your show, Elections Watch. Please be sure to join us for the third and final segment where we are hosting Reverend Gunyai Mzorewa of the UANC.